Example 168. Using the data from above, we calculated the standard error for the slope estimator to be 0 0.01257, and we found the slope estimator beta 1 hat to be 0.11729. Use the formula, given here, to form a 99% confidence interval to estimate the true slope beta 1 for the Mississippi Casino crime rate data above. So this is based on the work that we did in the previous problem and they gave us a lot of this information that we need to do the problem. So let's start off with the first thing we do normally for confidence intervals. We normally copy down the data. So since they gave us the data here, we have an easy task. N is just the number of paired values they gave us in the previous problem. It was 6 if you remember. Our sample size was 6 there. They then told us our beta 1 hat and they tell us that it's 0 0.11729. They go on to give us the standard error for that quantity. So beta 1 hat's standard error is 0 0.01257. Okay, once you have those things, we should write down the confidence level, which is 0.99, and of course that leads to an alpha of 0 0.01, because remember these two must add up to 100%. Now once you have that, you're going to go down to our critical value step of the confidence interval, so this would be officially step 2. Now it'll be a T alpha divided by 2. So why is it t? Well, because the sample size is small. And alpha divided by 2 is the traditional method we use in this course for forming a confidence interval. You can see the formula asks us for t alpha divided by 2. So once we have that, we're going to do the alpha divided in half. So that's t.005. If you take half of 0.01, you get 0.005. Now, the degrees of freedom, remember for this section, because we're estimating two quantities in the model, we're going to have n minus 2 degrees of freedom, so it'll actually be 4. Now we're supposed to go to our table and look these numbers up. However, I'm going to remind you by showing you the work we did for the previous problem that we've already come up with this number. And this is important because if you think about the process here, we can see that it's very analogous. Degrees of freedom was 4 in the last problem. We had 0 .005, and those are the values that we went to the t-table with to look up our critical values here. And you can see you get the same exact critical value because, of course, we'd be looking up 4 degrees of freedom. We would look, be looking up 0 .005 in one tail. And then, of course, we would find the answer 4.604. So we don't have to go back to our table because we already did that in the previous problem. And this means that also, by the way, we can now make a general comparison between what we did a moment ago, since it was a two-tailed hypothesis test, we have a two-sided confidence interval, we basically are using the same alpha. Our conclusion here should exactly match the conclusion we found in our hypothesis test. And remember, we found the conclusion that there is a linear relationship. So let's continue on then. We have our critical value. Our next step is normally to get the margin of error. Now, the margin of error is equal to the formula here is actually given to us, so we don't have to do much. We just have to copy that down. It's t alpha divided by 2 times the standard error for beta 1 hat. All right, so the t alpha divided by 2 is 4.604 times the standard error, which is given above. That's 0 0.01257. All right, let's work that out in our calculator and see what that ends up giving us. So. So the work there from the previous problem, as you saw, so 4.604 times 0 0.01257. All right, so we get the result 0 0.05787, and then I'm just going to do 228 and do dot, dot, dot. So I put the full number in there. In my calculator, I'll store that so I have it for later. And that way I can use it and call it up in a moment when I need it. All right, the next step is the last and final step, and it's the easiest one, really, right? All we have to do is to take our beta 1 hat, or our point estimator for the slope, and we're going to subtract and add the error to it. So we'll do minus the error here, and then comma beta 1 hat plus the same error. And this should give us an interval that's supposed to capture the population slope, right? The true slope for the data. All right, so let's go ahead and enter that in. Now, my calculator can do this uh, pretty easily, so let's go ahead and do it. 0.11729 minus the value that we had for the error. And I'm going to do the same thing, calling it back up, and now adding the error. So our final results for the interval are 0 0.0594, let's say, up until 0.1752. So 1752. Okay, so with that interval, we're going to give our standard interpretation. We're going to say we are 99%
confident that, in this case, the true beta 1 value is inside the interval, inside the given interval, the given interval. And that given interval, of course, is right here. Now it's interpretation time, right? So a lot of people have trouble interpreting the interval properly. They can write this statement because it's just really rote memorization, but you need to also be able to understand it. So let's cover that now. You have all positive values here, right? There's no zero in this interval because this number is positive, this number is positive, so that would mean on a number line zero would be off to the left here somewhere. And because they're both positive, it means that the true slope, you know, we're 99% confident the true slope is in here, so it should be that the true slope is a positive number. Remember, if the true slope is a positive number, that expresses the idea of a positive linear relationship. So don't forget, because, because it seems that beta 1 here is greater than 0, based on the interval, right? Because it seems beta 1 is greater than 0, we can conclude, we can conclude a positive linear relationship exists. Exists. All right, and what does that mean again? It means that as one variable moves, the other one moves in the same direction. So if we have a higher number of casino employees, we have a higher crime rate. If we have a lower number of casino employees, we have a lower crime rate. And again, the presumption here is that uh, gambling then has something to do with crime. However, as I mentioned before, you can't assume that gambling causes crime, right? It may be true, but we have to be able to demonstrate that some other way. So we can't, you know, just, you know, assume that there's a causality implied. So ultimately, we have to be able to find some plausible explanation and maybe perhaps one that's testable to be able to figure out if that's indeed true, that one causes the other. What we can say from this is that they appear together which means that if you have more, you know, it seems like in, in Mississippi at least, if you have a higher number of workers in the casino, which indicates more gambling is going on, you do in fact have a higher crime rate.